What's going on everyone? It's Sean from All Things EV and this video is all about four Tesla products that I'm looking forward to hearing more about in 2020. But before I jump in, I want to give a huge thanks to Tesla friend and supporter Chris for sending me this in. This is what deposit holders for the Model X in the early days received as a thank you from Tesla. As you can probably see right up here, I'm collecting them. I already have the S, I have the Roadster right up there, and then the Model 3 right there. And uh, so thank you, Chris, for sending this and uh, out, out of your good will and kindness, I'm gonna put something in the mail for you as a thank you. Now, let's go ahead and jump into this video. There's four products that I'm looking forward to hearing about in 2020. Three of them, we already know some information about. One of them we haven't heard anything about, but I would not be surprised if it ends up coming to fruition. So the first one is this, Tesla battery and drivetrain investor day. Elon has talked about this. He talked about it recently in this interview that Third Row Podcast did with him at his house. I mean, I know a lot of people were talking about Maxwell and they had been working on some stuff oh. with capacitors. The, yeah. the funny thing is that when I was doing the um, my internships at uh, this uh, advanced capacitor company called Penco Research, which was in Las Gatas, we, we talked a lot about Maxwell. Uh, and Maxwell was also trying to make high energy density capacitors. Now, Tesla acquired Maxwell. Mm -hmm. so Full circle. Cool. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's so so cool. that yeah. yeah. It's kind of a big deal. Yeah. That's great. Um, great to know. Maxwell has a bunch of technologies that are that that where if they're applied in the right way, I think can be have a, a very big impact. Like the dry electrode stuff. That would be one of them. Yes. <laughs> That's a big deal. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Much, much bigger deal than it may seem. Um, yeah, well, we yeah it, and there's like, a few other things, but yeah. With, with the, uh, the space that it takes up for the ovens that, you know, for the current <coughs> technology, you can save all that, that real estate space now. That's one aspect, and the cost reduction, the weight savings, I mean, there's so many pluses, right? Yes, I mean, there's many things there, but uh, I'll have to wait until, you know, whatever, battery day. Uh, which is ho you know, hopefully in a few months. But I, I think we've got some pretty exciting things to share. And I think it's going to be huge. This is based on what I already know about what has been shared, but this is also based on some private, off-the-record conversations that I've had with some people who have privy information to this event and, and really to what Maxwell will mean to Tesla, how Tesla will implement Maxwell, in particular, the dry battery electrode technology. What we know so far is that it will increase the energy density and it will decrease the cost of production of battery cells. This is in line with this idea that Tesla is very likely going to be creating or producing their own battery cells. They've been making a lot of movement in these areas. I've covered this probably at nauseum. You're probably tired of hearing about Maxwell, but I did all of that research last year in 2019 to understand what the implications are and come to find out it's going to be really, really huge. So the two things that I think that, that will be sort of the, the headlines as I mentioned, are the increase in energy density, which likely means that Tesla vehicles will, for the first time in the EV industry, go above 400 miles on a single charge. This is something that I think everyone is looking forward to. Who doesn't want a, an electric vehicle that goes further on a single charge? It means that you're stopping less to charge on long road trips. It means less concern. It means more buffer if you're in a colder climate and you're on a road trip. But I think what, what is also really exciting is this reduction of of, of cost of producing battery cells. It should take less room to produce the same amount of batteries. It should also take less time to produce these batteries with that dry electrode. So I'm super looking forward to this. And you know what I'll do is uh, I'll, I'll put some, some of my videos that I've done on these subjects in the video description. So if you haven't seen them and you wanna do some research prior to this battery and powertrain investor day, you can get caught up to speed. We don't know of the exact time and date, but if I were to put a, a, a guess out there, uh, I would say that it's probably going to be March or April, potentially right after the 
uh, Q1 ends, I think that we could see something there. The next product that I'm super excited about is the Model Y. I think this is going to sell extremely well, and of course at a price point similar to the Model 3, it should do equally well. And um, I think that it's going to address a separate market. I've seen some, some bears say that it's going to eat into the Model 3 market like Model 3 ate into the Model S, and I just don't believe that to be so. I think that the Model 3 did eat into Model S sales because you can get a sedan that is half the price of the Model S with better technology. With the Model Y, it's very similar in terms of technology and very similar in terms of price. So I understand why bears might predict that Model Y is going to eat into Model 3 sales. I don't think that's likely to be the case. In fact, I think it's more likely that Model Y will eat into Model X sales. So time will tell with that, but Model Y I think is going to be a wonderfully selling segment. I agree with Elon when he says that the Model Y will very likely be the best selling Tesla that they have and offer consumers. As far as when Tesla will start producing the Model Y, I tend to lean towards what some of my friends have said about the Model Y and that it's very imminent. We're seeing a lot of these Model Ys that are being driven by Tesla engineers all throughout the US. In fact, they were just in Boulder, Colorado, charging at one of the superchargers. And so they are doing tons of testing. They're everywhere, it seems like. And I do agree that uh, production is very imminent. In fact, I would not be surprised if they introduce this or announce this on the earnings call, which will happen tomorrow. The next product that I'm looking forward to is an update or a refresh of the S and X. Now, I know what many of you are thinking. Elon has said that they have no plans to do a refresh. And in general, Tesla doesn't really do refreshes, but they do incremental updates. And so I would not be surprised if Model S and X get a minor update in the interior in particular, as well as the battery packs. I, I think it's time to update it. We've seen that over the course of the last couple of years, the sales of Model S and X have dropped significantly. And I think it's time that Tesla refresh these vehicles as their top premium vehicles where they introduce the most expensive, most cutting edge technology, which I think will be Maxwell's tech. I would also love to see the vertical display as well as the HVAC system that's in the Model 3 be put in Model S and X. I think there are some significant advantages to that. I think that Model S and X definitely need the version 3 250 kilowatt charge rate because it does not right now. And I think that doing a minor refresh will spur on those new sales for people that either want a larger vehicle where Model 3 and Model Y are a little bit too small. Maybe they've got a larger family and want to fit more in a vehicle. And we, we know that Tesla is working on a Plaid powertrain for the Model S. To me, it makes the most sense for Tesla to introduce the most expensive technology that they've acquired with Maxwell into their premium products, spur on the SNX sales again, because they've got the best profit margins and it won't be high volume initially. So it makes a lot of sense for me that Tesla would introduce the most expensive low volume dry battery electro battery cells into their premium vehicles first, since they aren't producing a lot of those. And once they get that process down, then roll it downhill to some of their less expensive products. All right, the fourth and final product that I am looking forward to is not one that Tesla has mentioned anything about, but I'm extremely curious to receive an update on where full self-driving and autonomy stands for Tesla. You know, last summer they did a, an autonomy investor day and I found it to be incredibly insightful, although probably 90% of what they covered was way over my head. It was truly remarkable to see how far ahead they are from their competition, that they're producing their own chip and that they're working on some things in the background like Dojo to be able to process information faster and distribute it out to their fleet of vehicles. This I think is cutting edge and I really do think that this will lead the way for Tesla's autonomy ambitions and they are definitely huge. I don't know of any other company and any other automaker who has as large of a fleet of vehicles as Tesla does to be able to distribute iterative versions of their semi self-driving or full self-driving stack. 
What about you? Are there some products or events that you're looking forward to that I didn't mention in this video? I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. A huge shout out and thanks to my Patreon supporters. Thank you for believing in me and the content that I spend a lot of time producing as a side hustle and side hobby. Thanks everyone for watching and I'll catch everyone on the next video.